what this intro was. It's, it's a mess, but that's okay. I'm a mess. Good morning. So, my husband has an unexpected day off today, which means I get to film and hopefully get this video up on my new posting schedule, which I finally realized <laughs> should be every Friday. Um, if you're new here, my name is Christina and I run this channel because I like old books, I like vintage clothes, and I like to live a practical vintage lifestyle. And today I'm going to make the perfect fall dress. First and foremost, I want to talk about my posting schedule. So all of you know that for a while I have been trying to figure out what works best for me practically as a mother, as somebody who generally has to film during the week, or tries to film during the week because I don't like using up weekends to film. Um, I have been trying to figure out what was the best day for me to post and I have realized that honestly Fridays I think is going to be my posting day because that's the best, the optimal <laughs> day for things to be posted. That's when people have the most time is over the weekend and launching a video on a Sunday night has not historically done well for me. <clears throat> so we're going to change that. I'm going to be posting every Friday from here on out. But anyway, <clears throat> today... I'm finally sewing on my channel, which is something I meant to do every month, but I didn't. The fabric that I have in mind to use, I've had for a really long time. I've I've had this fabric, I want to say for like three or four years, and I've been too afraid to dig into it. Um, I have been wanting a very like fall dress because I'm so ready for fall. It has gotten down into the 60s here, so the weather has been decent enough for fall and I'm just ready for it. I'm ready to have like the epitome of fall in a dress. There are a few things I will note about the dress that what I want from it. I want to be able to layer it. So I want to be able to layer shirts like this underneath the dress. So it's going to be sleeveless or maybe have like a little ruffle. I don't know yet. I haven't solidified my idea of the design. I also have a lot of vintage patterns that I'll be looking at. I know that I want it to have a circle skirt. Um, so that's going to be easy. I all I really need from a pattern is the bodice because I can do the rest. I might sort of be drafting my own. I have a pattern piece that fits me pretty well and I might just like make the top how I want the top to be and utilize the rest of that pattern so that I can make it decently. But we'll see. Um, I think it's probably going to be a button up dress button up the front because I prefer those. So anyway, I'm just going to jump right into it. I just really want to make a dress. I've been seeing all these people making like, turning myself into a mushroom and I don't know, making the strawberry dress and all of Rachel Maxey's content is sewing and it always makes me want to sew and I haven't sewn because I've been afraid to do zippers or buttons because of my old machine. Um, but it's time to break through and get sewing and make myself into a fall leaf. Side note, let's talk about this amazing pin that Stephanie Canada has now to represent her channel. Um, it's incredible and it's perfect for this video. Speaking of brooches, I am going to have my own brooch very soon. When we hit 10,000 here on the channel, I wanted to do something special and I have actually been working on this idea with a friend of mine for over a year. Before COVID started, we talked about maybe working together to create something special for my channel that could be like channel merch, but not something like a t-shirt or a hoodie because I don't really wear those and I wanted channel merch that I would use. So uh, we came up with an idea for a strawberry brooch and it is almost finalized and I'm really excited about it, but I wanted to launch when I hit 10,000 here on YouTube. I'm so close to it and I'm so excited. I didn't ever expect my channel to grow to anything really and it has and it, it blows my mind but um, this is the brooch. It is not 100% finalized. There's like one tiny change that I need her to make. However, this is going to be as close as it's going to get until you see the final version. Um, and I am so excited with it. I'm so in love. I think she did such an amazing job. This is absolutely something that I would buy and wear. So I hope that all of you like it too. If you can go over to my community tab, I'm going to create a post where you can all vote and say, yes, I will buy one. The cost will be about $15 plus shipping, I think. Um, and we need to know an initial, like, 
initial amount that she can make to have them ready for the launch. It will be a limited edition run because she's a small business, there's only so much she can do. But if you could go over and say, I will absolutely buy one, we need to know a starting number to make so that she doesn't have an excess of product or she's not flooded with a bunch of orders that she can't fulfill right away. So very soon, if you want to represent my channel and have a cute strawberry brooch, you can. Also, subscribe if you like me, if you want to see more, if if you're excited about a strawberry roach, those are all really good reasons to subscribe. So, uh, back to our regular programming. Alright, so this is my perfect fall dress fabric. And then, um, because I am extra, I also got out all of my little fall dress fabric samples, which could make pockets or accents on the you know, whatever. So that's what I'm working with, but this over here is my main fabric that I have been too afraid to cut into for years. And let's look at some patterns. So I have a lot of patterns. Um, preferably I want to make this from a vintage pattern, but I have to remember where I even set my patterns. I'm really looking for a pinafore and I really like the top of this. So this is an option. <gasps> this, all right, so this is another option. All right, so these are the three patterns that I am thinking about using. Um, this one is very, very cute. However, I don't know if I have the energy to make a scallop front and that is just not quite what I'm looking for in a bodice, so I'm going to put that away for later. I do have another idea for this one. <clears throat> this is technically an apron, but I really like the way that the bodice is, and it does have, it fully closes in the back, so I would likely make this back and that front, and I love the pocket details, so that's something to consider. This is kind of the penafore esh thing I was looking for, although I'm not sure how this closes because I don't see buttons anywhere, so I would have to figure out if it may be buttons at the shoulder. I'm not sure. These are the two I'm thinking about. Um, I have to consider a little bit longer, and I, I'm not going to worry about the skirt on either because I will be making a circle skirt. So all I'm thinking about, I think I'm leaning towards this because I think that it will wear overall better. Oh, this is a hard choice. All right, so I have a little change of plans. What I'm going to do is actually, the bodice of this fits me really well and I'm going to utilize it for the button part, but I'm going to trace the pattern piece so that I can make the neckline look like this one. And also um, I'm gonna try and like mash these two bodices together to make the dress that I want, basically. We're hoping, I've never done this before, I hope it goes well. Um, I know how these pieces, like I know how things go together, so hopefully it works. altered the bodice front of this to have a button pocket and honestly I can probably just use the bodice front now that I realized it's just adding this little strip on the front um and I'm just going to use that in its entirety I'm just changing the back to not button up and changing the front to button up so yeah I have decided on this pattern now that I've figured out how it works
So this pattern does not have you cut out any facing, uh, which is like the lining on the inside. And I'm going to, because it's a lot easier than turning under all of those edges and it's a lot sturdier too. I'm just gonna cut out a full front and back piece extra for the bodice. Um, that's so that I have lining. All right, so I don't have quite enough fabric to cut out the back of it, so I'm actually gonna piece these things together so that I can cut out um, two back pieces and then I'm gonna have to sew those together. It's gonna be a little bit of piece work just for the lining, but that's fine. I don't really care too much as long as I have enough to line the dress. So the lining on to the bodice part, and this is the part that's always a little bit scary to me because I don't want to mess it up, but I have to sew around the neck holes, the arm holes, and I think I need to sew down the button placket, um, and I leave the sides open. And I believe that should work to be able to turn it back inside out. I guess we'll see. during which I make sure that it fits, which I think that it does. Um, I have to add buttons, obviously, and I have it pinned at the waist, but overall, I am super happy with this. It doesn't look like much right now because it doesn't have a closure, but I'm going to go add the finishing touches, um, and then we will do the reveal. So I will see you then. <laughs>
pretty happy with this dress, but I don't think I'm going to use that pattern again. I had to do so many things to it to make it fit nicely. I had to shorten up the straps, which you might be able to see right here. I shortened the skirt considerably. I actually took it up from the top of the skirt because I wasn't happy with how it was sitting before. Um, I had to take in the bust darts here and they're also in a really strange place, like they're too high. So that's all issues. Um, it was very, very, very baggy under the arms and I still have a bit of bagginess, but I'm just gonna leave it for now because I don't wanna do any more alterations. I did accidentally gather the skirt in the wrong way in a few places. I added a few pleats just here and there to help take in the fullness a little bit, like keep the fullness is what I'm trying to say. Overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It does just have a little, few little issues, which whatever, it is what it is. Even with dresses that I've bought, I've had to alter them, so it's not a big deal to me. It turned out exactly how I hoped it would once I got done with the alterations. I really love it. I'm so happy with it. I think the most noticeable flaw is probably around the waist. Uh, because I took it up um, to shorten it and also add more fullness, the waist is a little bit funky. And then the buttonholes are not the best, but I've never been very good at buttonholes, so it's, it's learning. I'm learning. Um, but yeah, otherwise this is exactly what I wanted. I know it's kind of a basic dress, but yeah, overall I'm happy with it. I have learned a lot and I, I have learned a lot about fitting myself. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video, the, the final first sewing video of the year, I feel like. I have been meaning to do sewing videos and I just haven't till now because I didn't have a project that I was super excited about, but I'm excited about this one and I hope all of you enjoyed this video. Next time will be a pinafore. Uh, I probably won't use a pattern. I'll probably just draw out the pieces that I want and do it that way because that's how I roll. So let me know down below if you want to see more sewing videos. As always, if you would like to support my channel in more ways than just liking and subscribing and commenting, you can always go down and check out my Ko-Fi link. I always appreciate the support. Subscribe if you like my vibe. I don't know if I'm keeping that around. I guess I am. But subscribe if you like my vibe. I hope that wherever you are, you are feeling safe and loved. And until I see you again, have a beautiful day and thank you for watching. Bye!